welcome back to my series on uh, how to maintain your Toro Xmark uh, Ride-On Aerator. Uh, and we're doing some work on this one right now. Uh, so I thought it'd be a good time to take a video. Uh, what we're doing today is we're changing the hydro oil, uh, which is your transmission oil, on the aerator. Um, don't be confused with changing the engine oil. And don't be confused with changing the auxiliary hydro oil which is up here what we're working on today is actually this part and this is your uh, hydrostatic transmissions and there's two of these uh, on the unit so uh, there's a left and right one they both look identical and that's what we're working on we're doing maintenance so we're going to change the oil and the filter on these so uh, let me show you uh, what we're dealing with as you note um, this is uh, an OEM filter this filter is an X mark number 116168. So let me show you what you're going to need to get this accomplished. Okay, to get started on this project, what you're going to need is uh, I'm going to show you how to do what's in the operator's manual, uh, but you're going to need uh, hydraulic oil, your oil filters, oil filter wrench, regular ratchet. Uh, you're going to need an 11 16th socket or possibly an Allen wrench. We'll get to that. Torque wrench is preferred, but you don't absolutely need this. And you need a 3 8 inch socket also. Um, and then I would recommend you get some brake parts cleaner on top of it. So let's take a look at this. Uh, and we're going to show you what it says in the uh, X mark manual. Uh, basically, it tells you to change it after the first 100 hours. And then every 250 hours after that. Um, it says, uh, you know, to... When you're installing your filters, of course, we'll go through all this, um, but use Xmark filters. Um, and then it says to use Xmark Premium Hydro Oil, which is this right here, Xmark Premium Hydro Oil. Um, now, when I start with my machines, I usually use this so I don't void the warranty for the first year. Uh, after that, um, I will switch over, and it says you can also use Mobile One 15W50 every 250 hours. So this is your Mobile One 1550. Um, and then you're gonna use uh, your filter. So keep in mind, these are hydro filters, not um, standard oil filters. The main difference there is the micron level, uh, so they filter more fine particles. So um, uh, let me make a note of one thing. These hydrostatic transmissions are an all-in-one unit, which means the pump and the gears are all together. And they're made by a company called Hydro Gear. And this is the model ZT3100. It's a commercial transmission that's used on mowers, aerators, and things like that. Now, why is that important? Well, I'm going to show you a couple of things. Um, this is the Xmark manual, but this is the Hydro Gear service manual for the ZT3100. Um, ZT actually is 28, 31, 32, and 3400. All the same service manual. Um, this is off of their website, and you'll find that most of the procedure is the same. However, it notes a couple things. Now, this part can save you some money. Uh, to start with, let's look at the filters. Uh, these filters are made by Rotary, and they're filter number 12374. It replaces the hydro gear number 52114. So, Rotary makes the hydro gear filters. Um, and if you look at the hydro gear manual, it says that you can use hydro gear part number 52114. So that's this exact filter. Now, this will save you some money because you need two of these. Uh, I think on eBay you'll pick these up for about six or eight bucks a piece, depending on the quantity you buy. Uh, but X mark filters are probably going to be in the teens, maybe between... Uh, I don't know, $14 to $18 a piece. So right there, you're going to save quite a bit of money. You also save money if you switch from um, Xmark Hydro Oil to Mobile One Hydro Oil. Um, and this is just motor oil, but I like to use full synthetic motor oil instead of a standard motor oil. And the reason is because our units, uh, they run a lot of hours. And a lot of times, they might run eight hours continuously with no break. Um, and they'll run hot. Uh, all kinds of weather conditions. So I use the best oil that I can get. Um, in this situation, I'm going to use uh, Lucas um, 2050 oil. Uh, and it's full synthetic also. 
Um, now the reason I'm going to do that is if you read the Hydra Gear Manual, it says to use 2050 motor oil with the SL classification, um, whereas once again the X mark one says 1550. So, you know, 2050 or 1550, probably not going to make much of a difference as long as you use a good quality oil. Um, and, you know, use what you think's best. You can use any three of these oils will do the trick. And let's get to it. I'm going to show you how we get started. Um, first thing we're going to do is remove the vent plugs. Okay, let's get started. First thing you need to do is get your Toro machine up off the ground. So I've used an ATV or a mower style jack um, that jacks up the wheels. Uh, you can also use jack stands and a regular floor jack to get it up off the ground. Uh, but either way, you're going to have to get it up off the ground. Just make sure that you support it adequately so it's not going to shift because you're going to have to um, get under the machine when you do this. Now, you would think that, of course, you're going to need a drain pan. And you would think you would want to take your filter and your stuff off first. But I'm going to show you something else because once you get this going, it's going to be messy uh, and it's going to be dripping. Um, so the first thing I like to do is get my vent plugs out. And you're going to need the vent plugs out um, to refill the unit more so than drain it. But let me show you how you get these out. Uh, because this is probably the toughest part is the vent plugs uh, and they're hard to access. So as we look from the side of the machine, uh, underneath the aerator, you're going to go between the hydro transmissions and you're going to look up from the bottom and there's going to be a hole right here. And unfortunately, hopefully you'll be able to see it, but if you look up in this hole, and I normally go from beneath right here and I go from beneath and I reach all the way up there is a look what looks like a bolt on this far corner side you can see it right there looks like it's a bolt but that's actually a vent plug uh, and that's the one you need to take out it should not be very tight now on some of the older machines I had talked about um, those are actually an allen head so you might encounter that also now there's two of these, and the easiest thing to do is just reach your head up in here and go by feel rather than go by sight. It's really hard to see, so just get up in there and try to get your ratchet on there and feel it. And then once you get it loosened, a couple turns like this. So you'll see you'll lose a little bit of oil, uh, and that's what your vent plug looks like. You shouldn't lose too much oil though, but I've got a pan underneath it to catch it with. Okay, well now that we've got the vent plugs removed, uh, one thing I want to note is before you start any of this, I forgot to mention that you want to run the machine and operate it for 10 or 15 minutes, uh, just like you would any oil change before you drain the oil. That gets the particulates and the dirt uh, circulating around in the oil so you can drain it more cleanly. Um, so next thing you want to do is take off the cover and remove the filter. Now be prepared because all of the oil on this unit comes out when you drain the filter. Now we're going to go around to the other side and do the same thing. Oops. Made a little mess. 
mess that time. Uh, unfortunately, I try not to take the filter all the way off, uh, but the threads weren't quite as long as I expected. The, uh, filter's off. I'm gonna let it all the way down because I wanna make sure I get all the oil out. Um, make sure it drains completely. And then I'll let it sit for five or 10 minutes. So now I've got it down all the way. We're just gonna let it sit and drip the rest of the way out. Now, hydro units are way more sensitive to dirt than just your typical motor uh, oil change. So um, if your unit, uh, I like to clean these before I service them. So before I service this, I actually hosed it off to make sure it was pretty clean. Uh, if your unit's dirty or if it has a lot of dirt packed around here, uh, the best thing to do is before you get started, hose that off and maybe even use some brake cleaner before you take the filter off. Spray around it, try to wipe it off, try to clean it. Then after you get um, the filter off like this, take yourself some brake cleaner and do not spray it in there, but spray it on your rag. And then go around the outside and try to clean the filter housing the best you can. And make sure you don't get any dirt inside the uh, transmission case. And just take a little dab of fresh oil. Dip your finger in the oil and put it around the filter. Like that. Hand tighten. Notice, I like to write the date and the hours when I change a filter. After I get that far, I'm going to go about another half to three quarters a turn with an oil filter wrench. And that's going to be it for that side. So now I'm going to put my cover back on. And now I'm going to do the other side and it'll be time to fill up the oil. And I'll show you the special procedure of doing that. Now we're ready to fill it up. Uh, I've got my oil and we're gonna put it right in through the expansion container um, and make sure you still have your vent plugs out. Having the vent plugs out allows it to drain in and you'll wanna pour it in just a medium to slowly. Sometimes it won't drain in as quickly as you can pour it. Notice you can pour it in really quick and it'll fill up the um, tank faster. So then just wait for it to drain down. Now capacity for this unit is approximately uh, two quarts per transaxle. So basically you're going to need four quarts total to do this. Uh, and when you're all done, after it drains out, um, you're going to want to look to this line and only fill it up to there because you need to uh, leave room for expansion. So full cold is your mark. Uh, as you're doing this, you want to watch under the machine. I still have a drain pan under here. Once it starts coming out, your top vent plug holes, you're full. So keep an eye down here to make sure that the oil that you're pouring in is not trickling out from the top vent hole plug, plug holes. Um, if it does, then you're full and you need to put your vent plugs back in uh, and those will get torqued. That's where your torque wrench comes into play. They get torqued to 180 inch pounds, uh, which is not very much. So let me get the rest of this oil in. I've got about um, three quarts more to put in, and then we'll show you how to bleed air out of the system. Now, if you see, I've got about three and a half quarts in here, three and three fourths quarts, and it's starting to drip out. Uh, the vent hole ports. Now I have to put those vent plugs back in. 
Now make sure that you have the rubber O-ring on your vent plug. And then just reach back up in there. Probably going to get a little messy doing this part. You have to do it from feel. And screw it in by hand. As much as you can get. And then do the other side. Now set your torque wrench to 180 inch pounds and go back in through this hole. Now, after you've got it to uh, the full cold and you got your vent plugs back in, uh, you want to raise the machine off the ground, jack it up off the ground just about an inch, about an inch off the ground on both sides. Uh, I just use a floor jack under the base frame right here. Then, uh, go ahead and start it up. And this is how we bleed the uh, air out of the hydro unit. Bring it back down to idle. After it's at idle, just take both controls and slowly go forward with it. Each direction go about halfway and then just go forward and just continue to do this you end up doing this a little more and a little more until you go fully all the way and now that you've done this five or six times So now that you've done it five or six times, uh, you'll want to check your oil level. It's still full cold. Uh, if you have to, add a little bit more. Uh, after that, you're all done changing the hydro oil uh, for another 250 hours. Hey, hopefully this has helped and your hydro oil is nice and clean, ready to go. You'll be good for another 200 or 250 hours. And um, keep watching my videos and please subscribe. You'll see more on how to maintenance the uh, X mark and the Toro units, uh, as well as how to do a lot more uh, equipment repair. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.